Welcome. Let's do a quick roundup of what's happening in Missouri politics. Now here's a fun little fact. Did you know in Missouri, if you're pregnant, you can't get a divorce? I was previously divorced. It was the first thing my attorney asked me. Jess Piper is amazing, and I highly recommend you following her if you don't already. Please, vote for her if you can. So yes, in fact, it is not just Missouri, but Texas, Arizona, Arkansas, and Florida all prohibit divorce while pregnant. Here's a clip from when that was passed. You girls will serve the leaders of the faithful. You will bear children for them. Oh, you are so lucky! Oh, sorry, uh, wrong video. It's just with Missouri forcing people to give birth against their will, I get confused sometimes. The Missouri GOP really doesn't want just highly controversial topics taught, like the history of Jim Crow laws or X-rated materials, like the fact that gay and trans people exist in the world. We see horrendous things like preschoolers, first graders, second graders, having conversations on sexual identity, on gender identity, books that have X-rated materials that I think any adult would be uncomfortable in looking at. You do not have a right to dictate my child's education because you're uncomfortable with the subject matter. And coming in here and pontificating about uh, sexual orientation, gender orientation being taught to young children, please. Please, that is not happening. What is happening is people talking about how life actually works and how people actually live and how people actually interact with each other and how our histories have affected, like the lady said, how we got here. There were people who took issue with the Civil Rights Act, as you are well aware, right? Yes, I'm familiar with that chapter in our history. Yes, I would love it if other students were able to get as familiar with it as you are. To me about the woke stuff that you think would be in the Civil Rights Act, because if it was not for that wokeness, you and I would not be able to serve in this body, to, mostly because I wouldn't be able to vote. And... So I wasn't speaking of the current Civil Rights Act. I was speaking of the possibility of those who have a desire to change the current Civil Rights Act to something we don't know what it would look like, right? So that's my consternation is that if that happened and things got in there that could be potentially bad for students and for the 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 history of uh, uh, or the 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 future of our state i'm sure as you are aware that people would think that you the fact that you and i can work together eat together serve together um is something that they at one point contended that would be detrimental to their students well someone might have i would not agree with that if that's the case correct you wouldn't there was a lot of change of hearts that we had to, to do in law. My problem is I don't know what that would look like. And neither did they. I don't want to tie my constitution, the Gentlemen, state constitution, to they. something that we neither, don't know what it's neither, going to be. Neither did they. Neither did they. The people who fought against the Civil Rights Act did not know what that would have looked like. It looks like this. And if we orient within that idea that we don't know what something is going to look like or growth or change because we're trying to keep people from being who they are authentically or learning different things, then this doesn't take place. I shudder to think of the kitchen I would have to be slaving in right now if it wasn't for the Civil Rights Act passing, regardless of the people who didn't know what it looked like. But I get to be State Representative Dr. Rachel Prouty today. SB 834 was apparently a public safety bill, but it ended up being a Christmas tree the size of Rockefeller Center. When all was said and done, there were over 200 amendments added, giving reps some good stuff to highlight during the re-election campaigns. I mean, I guess, because they all knew it wouldn't pass the Senate. Lady from Barton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I have an amendment to an amendment. I have an amendment ending in point eight four x Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I have an amendment to the amendment. Mr. Speaker, I have an amendment to the amendment ending. I have an amendment ending in point eight five x uh, I rise to offer an amendment. Mr. Speaker, I have an amendment ending in point four four x Speaker. I understand we're stacking chairs on the Titanic right now, but, uh, you know, I do appreciate having the ability to have this conversation. So much ended up in this bill, allowing guns in churches, lowering the concealed carry age for guns, allowing guns on public transit, a lot of gun stuff, making brass knuckles legal, outlawing red light cameras, good time credits for prison inmates, breaking up homeless encampments. But even though they seemed to be adding everything they could think of to this bill, and even though they knew it would not make it out of the Senate, there were a few amendments that were just too much for them to stomach. Basically, it says if there's a police-involved shooting that results in death, 
the Highway Patrol will come and investigate it. It's about transparency. I talked to Chief Hayden. He said he's okay with it and he likes it. He wants everybody to know what's on the table. And I think it's a good idea. If you support law enforcement like I do, I think you should support this bill. All those in favor say aye. All those opposed say no. The no's appear to have it. Last session we passed uh, Senate Bill 26, which was a uh, police bill of rights, which was a good bill. Um, one of the problems, though, with it is it wreaked havoc on citizen police review boards around the state. So this doesn't really affect what we passed last time. It just states that it will not um, affect police review boards and will still allow them to do their work. Those in favor, please say aye. All those opposed, please say no. no. And the no's have it. Gosh, the way the GOP refuses any oversight, even when it's an empty gesture, it's almost like the police have become a large corporation. Well, damn. HB 2149 passed without much fanfare. In fact, I couldn't even find any news articles on it outside of this one from Reason Magazine, a libertarian publication that was not complimentary of it. Why would this bill butt heads with libertarian principles, you ask? Well, it has updates to regulations for professional licensing, but one of those updates is to pharmacists, and it says, a pharmacist shall not talk to a doctor or patient to dispute the efficacy of ivermectin tablets or hydroxychloroquine tablets for human consumption, unless they specifically ask. If you don't know, these are COVID treatments that have been widely criticized by the medical community as ineffective and potentially harmful. In fact, in another part of the bill, it says a pharmacist cannot get in trouble if they say nothing about this and sell the drugs to someone who then gets sick. So, for Reason Magazine, this is an attempt to restrict free speech of the pharmacists, which it is. To me, it's just freaking unbelievable. HB 1878 has passed and is ready to become law. It would require a photo ID to vote, but it can't be expired, it can't be a student ID, and a voter registration card also won't work. Can't make any changes to voting six months before an election. So, if another health crisis comes, you better strap on your hazmat suit and be ready to show up in person. Also, no donations can be made to help the local government to register people to vote. The GOP says the only ones who should fund that stuff is the government. And we know the Missouri GOP is really on top of funding these days. Now, no other organizations can pay someone to register people to vote. So, nonprofits or unions that hire people to help with a registration drive in their community can buzz off. Okay, fine. Guess you're just going to have to do it individually or as an unpaid volunteer. But hold on. If you want to register more than 10 voters, you're going to have to register with the Secretary of State or spend a year in jail. I'm going to keep it 100, as we say in my district. This is the most egregious bill when it comes to impact on people that look like me. There's no going back from when you push this button for photo ID of telling me that you are not trying to disenfranchise my community, that you are not trying to disenfranchise communities that look like mine. I already know it's gonna be next. It's gonna be another chip, it's gonna be another chip, and it's gonna be another chip. Black History Month that we just stripped off on an education bill. I mean, let, let's be real. We may not be the South, but we show sure acting like it. Are we going to give our, like, our local election authorities more money and finances to be able to upgrade their computer systems to keep up with your timeline? Well, I mean, they get money from the Secretary of State's office and they have grants uh, that they seek for that. So, yeah, they're, they're mm -hmm. provided for that. So they have grants. So you now expect them not only are we not going to fund them, it's an unfunded mandate at this point. This is not just legislation. This is not just policy anymore. What you're trying to do is take us back to Jim Crow. No. You're telling me to my face, this is a good bill while it's simultaneously hurting me, my people, poor folk in your district, my district across this entire state. I wish that the cameraman could get what this chamber looks like right now because it is empty. Oh, it is empty in here while we're talking about gutting elections. We're talking about democracy at its finest, the root of what our country in itself was supposed to be built on. My father marched. He'll be 89 in December. He marched and bled for us to have the right to vote right now. Mr. Speaker, I can't even put into words truly 
how unfortunate the state of Missouri is today. I wonder why some are so worried about teaching civil rights history. Missouri's own Josh Hawley has authored a bill targeting the Disney Corporation. See, Disney made the mistake of questioning the wisdom of a recent rash of GOP laws that are targeting LGBTQ plus people and made the unforgivable error of publicly suspending political contributions. So Republicans are mad. This means they must do the most patriotic thing they can think of. Use the full force of the government to punish an American corporation that won't just get in line or shut up. Well, the end game is to stop federal handouts to woke corporations like Disney. This bill would set copyright terms to 28 years, plus a potential renewal of another 28 years for all works going forward. Except, that is, for the copyrights owned by the Walt Disney Company, because this bill says one specific type of business can't apply for renewal. Then it goes on to describe that type of business as Disney without actually saying the words Disney. It would apply retroactively, stripping them of intellectual property assets going back all the way to Steamboat freaking Willie. Now, I'm all for reps challenging mega corporations, but this is such a blatant set of revenge politics and so clearly unconstitutional. Listen, I'm just some dummy in a spare room with a green sheet behind me, but maybe we don't want our politicians attempting to use the government to punish anyone who speaks out against them? There is a baby formula shortage happening in the U.S. right now, and it's very serious, especially here in Missouri. Personally, we have family members that are on baby formula, and we've traveled to multiple stores to help buy it because stores are out. Now, my wife and I have a three-month-old, but we're very lucky because she can breastfeed. We reached out to our Missouri rep, and he told us candidly, the Missouri legislature is doing nothing to address this, other than blame Biden on Twitter, of course. The point is that this was the last week of session, and while new parents in our state are panicked about a major and immediate issue, they have prioritized passing laws to prevent pharmacists from warning about certain drugs, or another photo ID law, or laws preventing people from registering to vote, another attempt at outlawing teaching about civil rights history, another bill limiting vaccine requirements, and so many other pet project amendments I don't know where to begin. But Missouri parents unable to feed their kids, sorry Charlie, are on your own. If you don't think the political hacks in power here in Missouri are hurting the state by focusing on their own partisan bullshit instead of the actual problems facing us, I mean, what more prescient example can I give you? But how did we get here? Now, we could talk about how America doesn't support new parents, how many don't have access to paid family leave or adequate support to pump at work or breastfeed at home or the fact that there has been no plan in place for something like this. We don't have a strategic reserve of baby formula like we do with petroleum or other items. No, this has to do with corporate greed and government support of that corporate greed. Come on, of course it does. See, basically there are three companies that control the entire baby food formula market in the U.S. Sure, you go to the grocery store, you see a ton of choices, but those are false choices. Lots of different names owned by the same three companies. And in multiple states, they have exclusive contracts to provide formula through the WIC programs. That's the Supplemental Nutrition Program for low-income families. One of these three, Abbott, had a major recall, which puts a huge strain on an already strained supply chain. And large companies like this, they care deeply about maintaining low inventory in their warehouses. So if there's a sudden increase in demand, say your biggest competitor has a recall, they can't scale up production fast enough. Additionally, the FDA has significant restriction on foreign baby formula that comes into the country. So even though there is certainly high quality formula available abroad, don't count on it coming to the U.S. in any large quantity anytime soon. I mean, I'm not saying the FDA is trying to specifically protect large corporations. I'm just saying they tend to do that. So what do we do? I don't know. I just point out stuff and make snarky remarks. But you know, it might be helpful if the politicians in Missouri did a little more than that. Bye for now.